could you win FPL without making a single transfer? Probably not. Unlucky! But it is possible. Where just like two years ago and last year, someone has worked out that without a single transfer and a team that looked like this, you could have done so well, it probably beat you and me without doing a single thing all year. Now, doesn't that just make you feel like a great FBL manager, right? Spending hours and hours to do your team all thing. And somebody could have made this team, not done anything all year and still beat you. Now, that is actually what I call a little bit of a... I like it! <laughs> when the best set-and-forget team from last year had Lloris in goals, only beaten by Alisson for points, but there were three other Liverpool players who had better value, so that is why the Frenchman is there to protect the onion bag in the goals there. Trent and Cancelo as defenders with over 200 points last season, absolute madness. And Matip and James both having very good streaks, getting a lot of points when they were playing for a very good price as well. Salah and Son were the only premiums that made it, which actually meant Trent is the joint third most expensive player in this team. Oh. Which always seems to be a common theme across all of these best set and forget teams, where it contains all of the cheap bargains that got all of the points to proper maximize value. If you can somehow predict some of these cheap bargains right from the start of the season and you have them for a lot of season, Oh boy, you're in the money. Bowen was the third highest point scorer with over 200 points and he started the season at 6.5 million. Absolute crazy. And Madison and Mount are there for the big boy points they got when they played too. Then, very surprisingly, the strike force sees Emmanuel Dennis start as the only striker starting and Tony Ambrosia on the bench. Oh. That is actually terrible. Really showing you how wibbly wobbly the forwards were last year, especially seeing the forwards contributed the least amount of points out of anyone else in the entire team. Like, so, so bad. The captain seat was on Salah here to double all of his points and the vice on Madison. As the game Salah didn't play, Madison actually scored the most points, which obviously is almost impossible to predict in one of these set and forget teams. But it just so happened to work out that Madison was the best vice captain here. Then there were also a lot of auto subs with all of the bench geezers chipping in with a bunch of points too. So that was the best set and forget team from last year. Obviously wasn't someone's actual team. This is just looking at it in hindsight, which would have scored 2,696 points without a single transfer made and without a single chip played as well. Ah. So with this team straight from the start, it would have finished 1,166th in the world with nothing done to it all year. So potentially, even with just chips, it could have finished first in the world with just a couple of transfers definitely first in the world. Now that is what I think some people call... Lucky! <laughs> Absolute discombobulated, incredible wackiness there. Like, ma imagine if you could pull this off. Nah, nah, seriously though. Like, imagine being beaten by a team that wasn't touched all year. That's just like, wh why do we even bother? Why do we spend so much time frazzling our brain cells for literally nothing? <laughs> but it does just go to show you that there are always secret hidden gems which could allow you to have a much better squad overall, so more points overall, instead of just focusing on all of the very well-known expenses guys. Maybe this is the biggest case for against a freemium, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showing you that a fully balanced squad is always better than cutting corners in certain parts of your squad, as a full squad getting more points is better than individuals getting points, you know? That's, it, it sounds good. And that is that for last year's best set and forget team. So now, I'm gonna do what I do every year and try and predict my very own set and forget team, the team that I think that can just go out there, no transfers made to it, and it will go on to score all of the points. And I also want you in the comments to jot down your set and forget team. It's not going to be a real team, but just put down in the comments what you think would be a good set and forget team to get all of the points. And then maybe at the end of the year, you know, we could actually go back here and see who does the best, you know? Where the team I've made looks like this. We're in goals. I've gone for the Martinez and Olsen combo. As Villa have proper strengthened at the back, popping all of those Viagras because they're going to be really super hard to get past. And Olsen is also here because he's 4 million, but he is also the second choice keeper. So you always get a Villa keeper starting here, but for not that much money, which is exactly what we want in this set and forget team. Lovely. Trent and Robertson make it as, um... Yeah, they're just Trent and Robertson, aren't they? Points per million wise, they'll be up there yet again, even if they miss out in some games this season. They're just absolute beasts, aren't they? They got to be in a set and forget team. But somehow, it's probably going to be even more nailed than he was last year, as they've lost a fallback. So he will definitely make this team here as, you know, Man City best defense in the league. 
Then another set of double trouble with the Chelsea wing backs, yeah? Where they are actually perfect for a team like this, as when they play, when they're not injured, they probably will get all of the points. And then when they don't play, you can get all of the points from your bench players. A recipe that tastes very nice. But again, I just want to reiterate, that's not advice for your actual team. This is just advice for a set and forget team. Maybe it is advice for you if you can't be bothered to actually play FPL the entire year. You're like, yeah, okay, I'll just go for a depthy and girthy squad instead, you know. Don't have to worry about transfers and just let it do its thing. You could do that. But if you do that, you're a cheeky scrub. Don't do that. <laughs> but that right there is the defense done in this team. The most attacking defenders playing in the best defenses. Simple as that really, isn't it? Don't really need Scooby-Doo to find that one out. It's not a mystery at all. Then the midfield here, ooh, gets a bit more interesting, you know? A bit wibbly-wobbly, some would say. As the one and only premium I've gone for in this squad, which will also be the captain here, is go on my son! I've done that because I think he will actually start every game under Conte. With the likes of a De Bruyne, a Haaland, you know, get rotated every now and again, especially towards Champions League, I reckon. And now even Salah gets a rest nowadays as well. I think Son is the one premium to back here for the entire season overall. Yeah, yeah. Also, Spurs are going to win the league. They just are. You heard it here first. And definitely probably last. <laughs> Diaz makes the third Liverpool spot. Another reason why Salah isn't here. As value-wise, if you're not going to captain him, which, as you can see, I'm going to probably get to that. I think Diaz is actually worth it more over Salah if you're not captaining him. No, 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 no. Stop. I'm not saying Diaz is better than Salah. I'm just saying value and price-wise, yes. <laughs> Madison makes it as I feel like Leicester, without Europe, are actually going to be a different breed this year. A very, very sexy season incoming for him and them, I reckon. Then Neto as the best cheap asset at his price, and Andreas Pereira as kind of a backup last option on the bench, you know. Probably will have to sub on every now and again, but when he subs on, he'll probably end up getting a hat-trick in that week, because that's just how FPL works, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then up top, we've got top points in Gabriel Jesus, who I feel throughout the season could do bits, you know. I feel like he's just going to trickle along. I don't think he's going to get too many mega holes, but I think throughout the season, a good amount of points to be in, yeah? And then Mitrovic is also here because, you know, he's the best striker in the entire Prem, but also completely nailed and on pens, exactly what you want for this team. And then a cheeky Undav here to finish it, who I think is going proper Undav the radar, as yeah, although at the start, I don't think he'll actually start games, but I think as the season progresses, when he plays, I think he could actually do quite well. And again, in a team like this, having those kind of rotation risky, but when they play high upside players, is actually pretty good for a set and forget team. No, not advice for your actual team, just for a set and forget team. Okay. And that right there is this set and forget zombie team done. Way. Hey. Reminder, this is not my team. This is not even an FPL team, but it's just something we do and it's something cool to see as a team like this that could have no transfers made to it all season could actually go on and beat us all and potentially also go on and win the entire game. They could win FPL. No, no, no. My actual team is going to do that this year. But this team could also challenge it as well. But that is going to be it for today. Where, hey, let me know your set and forget team in the comments, you know. Just have a bit of fun, you know. And then, yeah, maybe at the end of the season, I'll review to see who did the best. Ooh, that'll be interesting to see. Thank you for watching. But also, remember... <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>